remember now, this, let, let me share this with you. I went to a bank on uh, Tuesday to open up a bank account and just presented the identification. Just did everything like they normally do, didn't say anything differently, just had the account established and all the paperwork and everything signed. And then I handed her uh, an order for them, uh, uh, <clears throat> an order. And the order was basically to the effect that the province, well, the birth certificate indicates the guarantor slash trustees on this account. And so I'm issuing this order in the form of a promise to pay, but it wasn't really a promise to pay, to cover the charges to this account. In other words, the trustee, the trust is the trust is covering this account, and the trustee slash guarantor are identified on the birth certificate, and that's the party where <coughs> that the bank knows or should know who that is. It's going to cover all the charges to the account, so you know checks, debits, whatever the case may be. And I gave that to the to the girl that opened up the account, and uh, she didn't have a clue, or indicated she didn't have a clue what it meant. And I asked her to send it to legal, and she actually did that. And I got a call back today, and uh, from her legal department saying they're they're going to close the account. They don't want to do business with me. Now, in hindsight, that may seem stupid, but in hindsight, the bank is not the trustee. Remember, I'm the settlor beneficiary, and I kind of indicated that on the letter without saying as much, but I think the bank perceived what was going on here, and they're saying, well, look, we're not the trustee. Your situation is with the government, and you need to get the trustee to do this for you. You can't the, see the, the, the settlor doesn't open up the bank accounts. The beneficiary doesn't open up the bank accounts. The trustee does that stuff. That's the job of the trustee. If banking is required, the trustee does that. If it's pens and papers and office supplies required, the trustee does that. The settlor simply gives the orders. But the settlor, if the settlor is going in and establishing accounts, then he's appearing as a trustee because that's the job of the trustee. So you can see when you're going into a bank to open up a bank account, you're appearing as a trustee. So I think that, uh, I can't say for sure, but I believe that the reason for the response from the bank was is saying, look, you're asking us to be a trustee here, or you're, 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 you're confusing things, Vic. We can see what you're saying here, but you're coming into the bank as a trustee, and we are not the trustee either you got to go up the other ladder and have this account open by the trustee. Now, I'm not focusing on bank accounts. I just, and, and I, Bruce and I went and did that, and I said, I just want to find out what happens here. I also went to the Ministry of Transportation to have a conversation with those people at Keelan 401 about uh, when I applied for a birth certificate, I didn't know that it was a not personal identification. Well, I learned, uh, we learned fairly quickly that that went way over their heads. They didn't have a clue what we meant there, and uh, so I've learned now from that that, you know what, communicating this information to the phone company, to the, to the offenses office, to the, to the bank, is not the place to communicate it. We don't have a trust relationship with them. You look on your birth certificate, it says Quebec, there's your trust. In Ontario, it says on, Ontario, there's your trust. And of course, the government, the respective governments, are the trustees. So, it's, so I just wanted to share that bank thing because when I got uh, home and uh, Bruce let me know, and I called the lady at the bank and she called me back and told me all of this stuff. And I said, well, send me everything. They're closing the accounts. So send my money back. And I said, well, make sure you include that letter <coughs> from the uh, law firm or the law, legal aspect of the bank. But I believe that the reason they did that is because they are not the trustee. They serve open accounts for trustees, which is basically businesses and people who don't know who they are. So in, in that sense, uh, like, <clears throat> the bank is the enemy, but I don't really want to use that language. That's, that's not a positive thing. It's not that they're the enemy, I guess. I'm my, I'm my own worst enemy. But when you start putting things in perspective, the settlor is the one that gives the orders to the trustee, and the trustee carries out those orders. So again, I'm saying this to put on you to do an acceptance for value and say I'm the settlor on a phone bill and say or a hydro bill or tax bill and saying I'm the settlor a beneficiary here, yeah, I'm going to say it's not going to compute because that's not information that you communicate to those parties. Those parties just want to get paid in money. That's it. That's the extent of their responsibility or their duty or their purpose is to get paid in money. Whatever that is doesn't matter, but they take checks, cash, credit card, that's good. Fine, that's the money then, whatever you want to call it. doesn't matter, but that's what they do. That's what they deal in. They are not the trustee. Now, if you think of... Uh, any trust situation when you come up, if you become aware of a trust has been established for you, for example, by your parents, you first go to the whoever the trustee is and you introduce yourself. 
You do not communicate to the party that's sending a bill and say, contact my trustee. That's not his job. That's your job. So we've had everything way out of whack, and, and, and everything we're doing and doing those acceptances for value and uh, playing that game there it makes us out to appear as the trustee. Because if we'd actually done the right thing here, then, then we would not re be receiving those bills, either that or you'd have a checking account covered by the trust that would you just write checks to pay the bill with, with how things are normally done. And this, what I'm talking here is how things are normally done. Pay, pay attention to a court. How are things normally done? Well, let's see. On the, on the order, it says Province of Ontario. So the judge is representing Province of Ontario. He's not ordering the guy standing there. He's ordering the name. And they kind of dangled the order out there to see who's going to pick it up and pay it or perform on it. And that's always been us because we have acted as if, well, basically, we didn't say we're the settlor slash beneficiary. <clears throat> In absence of that, you're treated as the trustee. And, and bad trustees go to jail. They're a risk to everyone else. So if you really start to pay attention to the, what's going on out there and don't try to reinvent any wheels and see, pay attention, who does what out there? What does banks do? What does the court do? What does the judge do? What does the crown do? What do the girls do at the office? If you pay attention to all of this, you start to see, well, the word surety applies to court matters. The word guarantor applies to banking matters. So if you're going to say you're a surety on an instrument, that doesn't compete with banking because that belongs, that's court language. But it means the same thing. Guarantor and surety is basically the same thing, but they don't use the word guarantor in court. They use the word surety. They use the word guarantee in banking. And so you can see how we've really <clears throat> been confused or confused ourselves, and then we confuse the whole situation out there when this is about working with the what isness of it. And if you really start to take a close look at the what isness out there, then you'll see, well, that's not the place to go, and that's not the place to go. There's a trust here. I've got to communicate with the trustee, and, and that trustee will take care of all of these things for me. It's not my job. It's not the duty of the settler to open accounts, to settle up accounts. That's the purpose of the trustee, doing that on behalf of the trust. So if you're settling or putting property into trust, it goes into the trust, and the trustee for the trust does all of that stuff. If you're using the birth certificate to serve self, then essentially you're the trustee, and, and, and the real trustee is not going to do that for you. That's why the government will write back to you and say, we're not responsible for your debts. Because they don't have anything registered in their system that says that you're the settler. It's nothing to say that what you're doing in the name of that birth certificate is going into trust. What they do have is it's going into your, you're building the treasurers in your own backyard, in your own pocket, in your own bank account. So we've come at it from a completely wrong perspective, and uh, again, that's why I started off with what just seems to be human nature, and I catch myself often. <laughs> you know, yesterday was uh, sunny and 20, and today was uh, cloudy and rainy and 12. Well, geez, it's not such a nice day today. <laughs> that's just, again, coming from that negative viewpoint, and uh, if we have that in us sometime, we have it in us all the time, and generally that's how we're going to perceive things from that perspective. Instead of being happy, hey, I'm awake. I'm alive. I'm happy it's raining because the plants need the water. Look at the grass is growing better now and, and coming from a more positive situation. <clears throat> so that, that to me relates back to how we've treated this birth certificate. We've resisted it. We've refused it. We've looked at it as somehow we're getting screwed by being in possession of it and, use, and, and all sorts of other stuff. But if you start to pay attention here, the fact that you're entitled by a third party to be recognized by that name and everything you're doing in that name, you don't own it because you're only entitled to be recognized by it. It's not your name, in fact. And the birth certificate is not identifying you as the owner, but the name, which is of the trust. You can see here now that <laughs> it's actually really good. To resist the birth certificate is like to resist that God gave you a human body, but how the heck can you do that? Because you didn't give it to yourself. It's true. So there's these underlying truths, these underlying uh, principles. And uh, when we start to see those, it's, they permeate through everything. And uh, as Lee gave me an example today, uh, when you go to a bank... You deposit money with the bank. That's your property is deposited with the bank. The bank is now the trustee. And if you want the bank to do something, you write a check which is ordering the bank to pay this money, my property, over to that guy. And I'm just using the bank as an example here. So in, in that sense, you're the set lore and that you put your property and trusted it with the bank. They hang on to it and they use your money or whatever they do with it. They have a duty to pay you the interest on the money. They can't get something for nothing, so that's what they're paying interest for. You're entitled to that interest because it's your property that the income or interest is uh, emanating from. So you can carry out the same thing to the bigger picture here with, with, with the government. And again, I'm not saying who or what in the government or not even which government, but 
just want to create a picture here for everyone and then um, do with it what you will until we uh, – uh, I, I, again, I'm, <clears throat> I'm hesitating here to say what I'm going to do because it may not be the right path. So I have to do what I have to do to find out the answer. Once I have the answer, then they can say, well, here it is. So again, as I said at the beginning of the call, this is more for information and to, and to plant some seeds in your minds there and, and be, maybe cause a perspective shift, and certainly anyone is free to go and do what they wish to do at any time. But I can't tell you on this call and say right to that party there because I don't know that's the case, just being honest. Um, but I do believe it's, uh, at the end of the day, I don't think it matters a whole lot exactly who you communicate. Government, in fact, if you look at your statutes, you should be able to figure it out very simply. Well, who's authorizing these statutes? <laughs> who's authorizing me to be recognized by the name uh, the king over in Africa? No. President of the United States? No. Somewhere here in Canada. That's what I say. Narrow it down. Let's get my computer out here and read that statute. Well, that's an Ontario statute. Oh, I see. That's an Ontario legislature. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so you see, you can narrow it down yourself really quickly. <clears throat> And that, I'm not saying that we won't be sharing the finality of this, and uh, that's why I was curious that uh, people were willing to support this because I do, I truly do believe now that this, uh, this, we're hitting the nail on the head now. And so I don't foresee this thing dragging on very much longer. But in the meantime, it's just uh, I'd like to keep the information flowing. But like I said, I'm down 800 bucks here, and when that's gone, it's gone. There's a, the truck needs a new windshield. It's 225 bucks, and I said, well, that can wait. <laughs> Got two serious cracks. <laughs> but it can wait, because <laughs> I know I know the good thing's coming, and that'll be taken care of. I'm not concerned about that. So by no means is anyone getting rich here, and um, I'm not suggesting anyone saying that, and I appreciate that lots of people out there would like to uh, help, and they just are not in a position to help, because themselves are in a pickle, and I understand I accept that. No one's asking anyone to uh, what they can't do. But uh, somehow, some way, we can always we can always scrape it up if that's what's necessary. So that was really the two purposes of the call is to, because uh, I'd like to keep the information flowing, but I also have to deal with my economic reality here. And, uh, again, I'm not coming from fear, and I've got lots of friends out there. So, in fact, I've had this feeling in me for three or four years that it's when the money's gone <laughs> that, I, that I'm really, really okay with not having any. I'm free of that now that, boom, the door opens. And I'm actually the closest I've ever been to that for a very long time. <laughs> I think 1986 was the last time I was uh, had no money in the bank and had $1,200 rent due, and it was a time to shit or get off the pot. So I got off the pot, and by the time the rent was due two weeks later, there was plenty of money in the bank. So I had to. Sometimes you got to go down the dumps to get motivated, and uh, that's exactly what happened. And then uh, never turned back, and we were next thing you know, we got a million dollar business going, which is long gone. But so part of the reason for this call is to is to maybe motivate people to uh, you know what. To, Let's, let's get the computer out here. Let's ponder on this. Let's uh, think about this. And let's look at things from a, a non-resistive or a positive perspective and start to see that everything is, is good. It's all perfect. <laughs> no matter what we do, everything is in trust, and there's no escaping that, and there's no taking anything out of the trust. It's like trying to take your body out of this world and still be in this world. can't be done. And... Um, I think I've said all i got to say. If, uh, if there's any, any questions, um, maybe now is a good time to, to bring that on. You have to unmute. It's okay, Vic. It's Dana here. <laughs> Hi, Dana. How are you? Me? I'm great. Okay. Anyway, I followed this along and understood absolutely everything that you had to say. Um, I think I'm, you know, I'm... I'm pretty good with uh, the understanding of it. Um, so I'm probably, how do I, can I hang up or do we have to wait till the um, the call is over? Unless Stephen might have something, might have a question. Oh, no, anyone can hang up whenever they so choose. No one's under any gun here at all and it won't affect the call. So if you need to go or whatever you want to go, by all means. Yeah, I love what you said. Love you. Oh, it makes perfect sense. Well, it's in harmony with what the lawyer said, but a slightly different twist on it, that's all. Yep, yep, no, I, but I understood everything. It was, uh, um, I, I woke up uh, yesterday morning with a whole bunch of thoughts rushing through my brain, and uh, I just typed real quick, you know, and uh, I think I pretty much got my understanding covered, you know, but I still, I still, it uh, doesn't hurt to take a couple of days to 
to ponder some uh, some of the insane, you know, just let it rest and then go back and look at it again? Yeah, well, first uh, I'll be uh, 